Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've had a rough winter here in the Appalachia, West Virginia section, and as you can see, we are busting out in spring. We have a chilly day here in April. We are in what's called galaxy season for astronomy. I don't really have the instruments to really take full advantage of galaxy season, but we've got a couple of things we're gonna try that we didn't do last year, and I'm going after a really cool object tonight that um, I've never tried to image. So let's take a look at the gear that we're using tonight, and then we'll take a look at the object that we're going to image, and then tonight we'll, we will monitor our progress as we uh, capture data. The conditions just look perfect. Pretty nice transparency. Here in the backyard, I'm on a Bortle 4, edge of a Bortle 4 sky, and when we get good transparency, it's really pretty decent. And the object I'm going for is gonna be coming up in the east. My light pollution is really to the north. So let me show you the instruments we're using tonight and then we'll take a look at the object. So last year in galaxy season, I used my 130 astrophysics refractor, which is uh, about an F6 and the focal length is you know, about 800 millimeters. And I would use a Barlow lens in the image train to really increase my focal length to about 1200. But my experience with this ZWO ASI 294MM Pro camera and the ability to go with a 2.3 micron pixel versus a 4.6 has been very impressive. I've used it in the hydrogen alpha image capture and it has been fantastic. If you haven't seen my hydrogen alpha images, I encourage you to check that out on the website. So it turns out that this native chip that is on the MC, I'm sorry, on the MM Pro is the Sony IMX492 sensor. And it has natively a 2.315 micron pixel. And what was happening is I guess ZWO was just bending initially was bending the camera at two, doubling that, basically making it a 4.6 micron pixel, eventually decided in November to make bin one by one the 2.3 micron pixel, therefore opening up this resolution capability. What I want to encourage you to check out, if you haven't already, is a great website called Astronomy Tools. And this gives an insight into the size of the pixels and the best way to match up your pixels with your telescope focal length given your varying seeing conditions. So what you can do here is there's a formula, very simple, that you can plug in to find the optimum equipment combination for your seeing conditions. And you can see here all the varying inputs, your telescope, I have my 130 EDF in here, the native focal length 780 millimeters. I use the 0.75 focal reducer, so we're a little bit off there. This is the ZWO294MM uh, Pro camera. So if you go with the native dropdown, it's a 4.63 micron pixel size. And that's showing a CCD bending of one by one. So I think they probably need to update their calculator here to reflect that. The bend one by one right now in the ZWO ASI Air software, when you bend one by one, it goes to the 2.3. So you can just manually enter 2.3. And then what, what you get here is I leave the sing set at OK sing, two to four arc seconds of sing. And what you what they in, indicate here is the ideal pixel size for OK sing, two to four full width, half maximum sing, is 0.67 to 2 arc seconds per pixel. So my 2.3 gives me a 0.83 arc seconds per pixel. So I am in the range. As you see here, I'm getting close to the, to the, to the edge of the tolerance of that range of the 0.67. If you go back to the 4.6 pixel size, you can see we're really closer to the sweet spot. We're now at a resolution of 1.67 arc seconds per pixel. I'll show you here in a minute what that resolution difference makes to the image in, in practical terms. But we're gonna go with that 2.3. I'm not gonna go with the Barlow. And what that allows me to do is to stick with 
the native F6 imaging train, so I can use hydrogen alpha for my galaxies and don't have to really increase the exposure time to something crazy. So I'm really curious to see how this 2.3 micron pixel setup works on the MM Pro tonight. I'm just going to gather the luminance data, and I'm using the ASI Air Pro and the standard astrophysics Mach Go to mount, Mach 1 go to mount. The object we're going for is NGC 4565, the what some call the needle galaxy. And uh, let's take a look at that. I'll show you what we're going after. Okay, here we are with Sky Safari Pro 6 on the iMac. And let's take a look at our object that we're imaging tonight. We are looking up through the top of the Milky Way galaxy. The Orion arm of the galaxy is setting in the west, and that's over here on the right side of the screen. And then, of course, the summer Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way will start to rise over here in the east. But in between, we're looking up through the whole of the top of the galaxy, of our Milky Way galaxy, to our galaxies surrounding us. And as we zoom in on the planetarium program, uh, first off, let me give you some pointers. Arcturus is a great reference point. You're just going straight up toward the zenith, which is basically the top of the sky, the top of the clock. So that's Boates and Arcturus, the Big Dipper, Leo the Lion. So it's, we're kind of parked right in the middle of those major constellations. The constellation here is Como Berenices. Not an easy one to pull out of the sky. Every oval object you see in this field is a galaxy. In particular, this is the Markarian's chain over here in the Virgo cluster of galaxies. You can see just thousands of galaxies will populate here. But our needle galaxy tonight is our image that we're going after. And this is the field of view with the Astrophysics 130 F6 with the focal reducer. I tried to initially include this galaxy here in the composition, but I thought it compromised the position of my needle galaxy. I really wanted it in the middle to make sure we get the best star quality. And we still get plenty of nice field galaxies here to supplement the Needle Galaxy. So let's take a look at the Needle Galaxy 40, NGC 4565, multiple designations here. It's in the constellation Coma Berenices. It is a spiral galaxy, a magnitude of nine, and the size is 6.8 arc minutes by 2.9 arc minutes. And this reference is saying it's 39 million light years away. And that's, again, a fantastic visual object. If you have an 8-inch, 10-inch telescope, I highly recommend picking this up visually. So let's take you to the live image capture and show you how things were going. As you can see here, we had a really nice night. The guiding up at the top is showing really sub-arc second guiding. I never trust that, but it was good quality guiding that night. This is so different from what I was doing last year where I was using a Barlow lens. This is that 2.3 micron pixel now, just at my native focal length. And the experience is so much better. Look at the stars, look at the field galaxies, look how smooth the field is. This is one five minute exposure from my Bortle 4 backyard. I was very happy with the results and was excited to really get as much data as I could on this night, which I think ended up being right around three hours. But uh, let's take a look going forward and see how all of this came out. Two nights later, I had an opportunity to also put the MC Pro on the exact same optical train just for comparative purposes. And I really tried to mirror the image capture uh, composition as much as possible. So this is the MC Pro data that we gathered about two nights later, exact same optical system. Let's see how all this compares. Now I wanted to go into PixInsight and just briefly show you the benefits of this 2.3 versus 4.6 micron pixel size. This is my exact same field of view, very close, within arc minutes of this, the field of view of the NGC 4565 with the MC Pro. Same setup, same telescope, same focal reducer. I just swapped out cameras. This was a couple of nights after my original MM Pro. This is the one-to-one, -one, one to one presentation of the Galaxy with the MC Pro. Now let's look at the one-to-one -one with the MM Pro. Look at that. 
that again is another great indicator of the resolution difference that you get with that 2.3 versus 4.6 micron pixel size. Exact same optical setup. What I love about this image on the MM Pro are these clusters. These are all galaxies over here. Well, this is a star and this is a star. That's a star. But anything that looks smudgy is a galaxy. And really, my Sky Safari Pro 6 doesn't even give these designations. These right here, these faint fudges right here, those are all galaxies. Look at this galaxy field up here. Look at this elongated, maybe an edge on here, spiral. These are all galaxies right here above the central bulge of the 4565. And of course, look at the detail in 4565 versus the MC Pro. So I just wanted to show you that the benefits of monochrome, you can't deny the benefits of monochrome in this type of a scenario where you're trying to get the most out of your focal length in galaxy season. And the beauty of the resolution of 2.3 versus 4.6 microns. Just love it. What I've done here, I've taken that original MM Pro image, the 2.3 micron pixel image, and I've just brought it into Photoshop here, and I've put in here an output resolution of 300 pixels per inch. And you can see what we get. We get a 20, I know sometimes the numbers don't show up well in this uh, video compression, but it's a 26.67 by 18 inch print. Okay, so that's with the MM Pro. So let's take a look at the uh, MC Pro. So if I go here and do a no resampling, just put 300 pixels per inch. You can see here I get a 13.8 by 9 print. Okay, so that's again what you would, we're, we're doubling the pixels, we're doubling the resolution, we're doubling the print size capability. The takeaway again on that smaller pixel size, print output, higher resolution capabilities. You can see the detail that we can pick up here in this uh with this same optical system, just a 600 and some focal length optical system. And I just love these clusters of galaxies here off the edge. Aren't those cool? So that's uh, just a look at resolution with my current setup.